Is this tiny little firewall really worth $250? Well, today I'm going to put it to the test. We're going to look at how easy it is to set up and evaluate its performance in throughput, VPN, constant filtering, and of course, intrusion prevention. And then I'll determine if I recommend it as a consumer level firewall, so like something that everyone can use. The firewall of Blue Plus is a consumer level firewall with easy setup. We'll get into that. It features firewall functionality, of course, with 500 megabits of packet processing power, GOIP filtering, safe search, parental controls, VPN server, site to site VPN, ad blocking, intrusion prevention powered by the Zeek network security monitor framework, and can log your traffic and bandwidth usage. But before jumping into those tests, let's talk about the setup. One of the standout features about FireWallet is its simplicity in setup. Unlike most firewalls I work with, you don't need to tamper with your router at all. It uses ARP spoofing to intercept the traffic from your other devices. It's actually sort of attack. This does mean that setup can be done without touching any of your network settings at all. So perfect for less tech savvy users. Now, there are a few caveats with this approach, namely that not all routers are going to be compatible with it because it's kind of an attack. Uh, ARP spoofing or ARP poisoning is the method they're using here to intercept the traffic. So rightfully so, there are routers that are going to prevent this from happening. So you're going to need to check if yours is even compatible. There are alternatives with DHCP mode and some of the other firewalls can be full routers, but that does require a bit more setup. It's also not hard to completely just bypass the firewall if a user knows how to communicate directly with the router, since it is just intercepting the traffic. But again, since this is for home use, that really shouldn't be the case unless you have some really smart and persistent kids. Now, the throughput that they're advertising for the firewall is one of the first things that intrigued me about it, because this little thing boasts 500 megabits of throughput, whereas something like this FortiGate, similar to the one I use, can only do about 700 megabits per second. But how can that be? Well, short answer is apples and oranges. Something like this is only going to be doing 700 megabits of throughput because it's doing a lot more than just regular inspection. And how deep the inspection goes is much different between this and this. But for home, this is going to be more than enough. Now, as much as I wish it was easier to get something at this level of security in people's homes, this costs a few grand plus licensing every year, and that's just not going to happen. So can the firewall really do 500 megabits of throughput with threat protection? And the short answer is, yeah, it really can. I did find the speeds to be a little inconsistent, but after a little more investigating, it turns out that was my test environment. So once I was able to get that sorted, I was able to consistently get my max throughput. The intrusion prevention or the part that's going to protect you from malware is called advanced protect on this. Now having it off set to default or on strict mode did not impact performance at all. I was still able to reach 500 megabits per second or as close as my connection would allow me to. Without the firewall in place, my connection was hovering around 650 megabits per second. And once I connected it, I was at 500 megabits per second. The lowest that I ever got was in strict mode at about 420. So going through the firewall did throttle me from 650 down to 500 megabits per second. Turning on the default protection kept it at 500, so no impact there. In strict mode, it did go down as low as 420 megabits per second, but I think that's within the margin of error of speed test. So in terms of throughput, it was working exactly as well as expected. But how well is it actually protecting you? So moving on to security. The firewall is powered by the open source Zeek Network Security Monitor framework. Now, since I primarily work with enterprise tools, I actually haven't gotten to test an open source IPS like this before. So I tested it against the same malware samples that I would for any firewall. And these are industry standards and should be very easy for any firewall to pick up. I got malware samples from iCar, Palo Alto, and FortiGuard. And also tested against simulated botnet traffic from Checkpoint's CheckMe tool. And for these tests, results were kind of rough. It failed to block all the malware samples from all three sources. Now, the funny thing is for the iCar malware sample, I actually got a notification on my phone telling me that I had downloaded a malicious file. So apparently the default for advanced protect is to just notify you about malicious files and not actually blocking them, which very strange. Now I'm sure the, the Zeek IPS behind this might be a little more complicated on it. Perhaps it led it just because it was a low risk malware sample since it is a commonly used malware sample. But unfortunately, the only information I got was the notification saying that I downloaded a malicious file. But when I turned advanced protect to strict mode, it did block me from going to the iCar website altogether. So that site has nothing but malware samples and it kept me from going there. So that's better. But it only did that on that website. I still had no problem downloading the malware samples from FortiGuard or Palo Alto. And it didn't matter the file type of the sample malware either. I downloaded the plain text file, the zip file, the exe, the tar file, all of them went through. So for malware protection, there's a lot left to be desired here. Now, of course, this shouldn't be your only layer of protection. You shouldn't just depend on the firewall to prevent you from downloading these files. Every one of these files were detected as malware by my browser, so it was stopped once the download was started. But again, these are long-standing sample files that everybody uses. It should be the low hanging fruit. Now, what about threats that don't require you to download anything? For this, I use Checkpoint's CheckMe tool that simulates botnet traffic, command and control, common zero day approaches, and a few other things. My control test showed that my test environment only passed anonymizer usage check, 
which just checks if you can use proxies or not. Not a big deal compared to the rest of the test that failed. Turning on advanced protection got us a pass in the malware check, strangely enough, so it does lead me to think that there is a lot more behind the scenes that didn't come up with the iCar test. We also got a pass on zero day and browser exploits, but failed the command and control and data leakage checks. On strict mode, I couldn't even complete the test, so I'm just gonna assume that that's good in this case. So overall, our security posture was improved, but it's not exactly consistent. Detection on here is exclusively signature based, which does have its own limitations, and we can talk about that in another video. If you're wondering what constitutes as a pass or fail on CheckMe's test, you can check out their website at cpcheckme.com for more details. Or maybe we'll do a deep dive in another video. Next, we tested their VPN capabilities. Setting up the VPN was fairly effortless. I just had to go on the app, turn on VPN server, select which server I wanted to use. I chose OpenVPN and then download the VPN profile file to use on the OpenVPN app. I opened the file with OpenVPN, entered the password that it generated, and it connected. This is one of the smoothest experiences I've had setting up a VPN. And I didn't have to open up any ports, set up any users, make any VPN pools, or firewall rules. That does mean there's not a lot of granular controls for the VPN. In fact, there wasn't even any options for split tunneling in the app or the web UI. But again, for the common user, most of those options are probably best left out. As for the VPN throughput, off VPN, my LTE speeds were at a steady 100 megabits per second. And once I jumped on VPN, it dropped down to 2.2 megabits per second. Now I did do a couple more tests to see how consistent that was. And it did jump up to 30, up to 45 megabits per second, but never more than that. And checking out their data sheets, that is pretty much in line with some of the larger firewalls that they have. Uh, they don't have any advertised speeds for this one specifically, at least not any that I could find. So barely being able to get over 40 megabits of throughput can be very limiting depending on what you want to do. So if you were looking to VPN to your home network for remote desktop or streaming from something like a Plex server, this just isn't going to cut it. Lastly, I'm going to test the feature that's probably the primary reason you would even want a firewall in your home, content filtering. Now there's two main reasons you would want content filtering at home, ad blocking and parental controls, both of which are something that most households want and are very hard to get right definitely not easy to do. So first the ad blocking. The ad blocking here actually worked phenomenally. I ran BlockMe's advanced ad test and the only ads that weren't blocked were in video ads like YouTube, interstitial ads, the wait X seconds to close ad kind of ads, and pop under ads, the ads that pop behind your current window or underneath the thing you mean to click. Since the ad blocker runs on the network and not in your browser, it didn't detect that I was using an ad blocker. So websites that often say you need to turn off your ad blocker to access this content won't know that you have one on. So while the ad blocker was not perfect, it blocked a huge amount of the ads. Like I can't even show you the full extent of what it tests because there's a lot of stuff in those ads that I can't show. Speaking of spicy stuff, content filtering is probably the most tricky one to get right, even at the enterprise level. Because content filtering, no matter what environment you have it in, will always get challenged and tested by the users. Which means getting good results either means huge blanket blocks that just hinder your experience or putting a lot of work in fine tuning it. Firewall does feature application based blocking for 10 of the most popular apps out there. So stuff like Snapchat and TikTok. And while that may seem like a very small amount of apps, keep in mind that this is a big reason why we pay licensing on enterprise firewalls. Even some of the most high end firewalls with their extremely expensive licenses have a library of about 5,000 to 6,000 some apps that are defined for this. So even 10 of them for free on here is pretty good because that takes a lot of work and upkeep. Additionally, you can also block by country, domain, and categories like gaming, social streaming, and spicy stuff. Categories like gaming, social media are very easy to block. When I tested it, they work exactly as expected. But when it comes to blocking the spicy stuff, that's where it gets complicated. Setting up the block for spicy sites in that category does block most of it. But even when just doing a Google search for corn, there was still several pages in the top like 10 results that were not blocked at all. And without even going to any of the websites, just going to images with the same search gave plenty of results. And social sites like Reddit or X that could host spicy content on it have absolutely no blocks. So it's not looking at any of the context. It's just looking at the domain more than likely. So just setting up the basic block really isn't going to deter any teenager from finding stuff. Now there's another piece of the puzzle that can help with this. And through the firewall, you can enable safe search for things like YouTube and Google and Bing. This completely cleaned up the Google search and image search. So there was none of that to be found. Now keep in mind though, safe search does remove a lot more than just the spicy stuff. So if you've ever used YouTube with safe search, you'll know that a lot of content's missing because videos get flagged or age gated for many reasons, not just because of suggestive stuff. Even things like news and spooky games will get filtered. So no Philip DeFranco or Doki Doki lore videos. Luckily, every single one of the controls I've mentioned, you can apply to specific devices. So you don't have to do it for everyone in the household, just for certain phones and PCs. So while this isn't a perfect filtering system, that's something that's hard to get right, even in an enterprise environment. Parent involvement should always be the main route here. And things like this should just be supplemental. 
So how does the firewall hold up? Well, it's somewhat affordable compared to most firewalls and it's relatively simple to use it and offers some security benefits as well. I wouldn't recommend it for its VPN capabilities or the Docker stuff that I didn't even get into because its resources are so limited for that. I think most homes still fall under the 500 megabits per second or less internet speeds that this is limited to. So this would suffice for most needs. And the ad blocking is on par with things like Pi Hole, but with significantly less setup. I think most power users can easily traverse through the firewall and even most novice users shouldn't have much trouble. This little blue block is quite a powerful tool to take control of your home network. And at $250, I think it's definitely worth a shot. Now, the bad news is when I got this two years ago, it was still a fairly new product. And as of right now, they're completely sold out with limited stock. The regular firewall of blue is end of life and the support. The blue plus is still in production, but there's not much demand for it. So hopefully this video gets more people's attention, more people would ask for it, there will be more demand and we can keep something in this range on the market. Because while there is one other firewall that I'm testing that is in a similar price range to it with similar ease of setup, that's the only other one. Other than that, the closest is the firewall of purple, the bigger one of this one at $359 and the scope I wanted for this project is 300. So if this is something that you would want in your home, leave a comment. Let's let firewall know there's still demand for it. Unless there really isn't. I don't know. Maybe there just isn't that much of a market for easy to use firewalls for your home. Should be a shame. Anyway, if you've come this far, thank you for watching all the way through. If you enjoy this review and want to see more, do all the things, there's a like, subscribe, follow, all that stuff. But yeah, what do you think of this little guy? And is there any other test that you would want me to do with it or would like me to add to the scope of these videos? Anyway, hope that helps. Thanks.